My name is Dr. Mark Settler, and I'm an engineer and lecturer at Imperial College London. My work focuses on reducing the impact of the way that we travel on the climate and on the quality of the air that we breathe. In the atmosphere, water can exist in all three states, as water vapor, the clear odorless gas form of water, as liquid water, as droplets in clouds, and as ice crystals in very cold clouds. When water evaporates, it turns from a liquid to a gas. When water vapor condenses, it turns from a gas into a liquid. Sublimation is the process of ice evaporating into water vapor without becoming a liquid first. But when water vapor forms ice, either in clouds or as hoarfrost on the ground, it's called deposition. The concentration of water vapor in the air varies from place to place and from time to time. The weather can have a big impact on the humidity of the air. That is the quantity of water vapor in the air. So does where the air has come from. For example, the sun's energy heats the particles near the surface of the ocean. So they start to move around more quickly and some overcome the forces of attraction and evaporate. If the air was near the surface of a warm ocean recently, then it's likely to be more humid than air that has stayed high up in the atmosphere. When the water vapor in the air condenses, it forms cloud droplets. The warmer the air is, the easier it is for water to evaporate. If cloud droplets form, they can evaporate again immediately, so you don't tend to get clouds forming. The more water vapor there is in the air, the easier it is for water vapor to condense. If the air is very humid, cloud droplets are more likely to form. There is evaporation and condensation going on all the time in the atmosphere, especially in or near clouds or the ground. High up in the atmosphere, where it is very cold, water vapor can go straight from a gas to a solid, depositing as ice crystals which form very distinctive looking cirrus clouds. Sublimation can also occur when these ice crystals evaporate without melting first. When water vapor condenses into liquid water or deposits onto ice crystals, the temperature of the surrounding air increases because of the latent heat that is released. The latent heat that is released when water vapor condenses or deposits in clouds increases the energy stored in the atmosphere and is the fuel that drives most of our weather. Clouds play a fundamental role in our everyday weather and in climate change. One type of cloud that there is a lot of concern about is contrails, the long, thin clouds you sometimes see trailing behind aircraft. They are produced when the very humid air coming out of jet engines expands into the surrounding atmosphere and cools. Sometimes clouds, these contrails, form. Sometimes they don't. The precise temperature and humidity of the air that the aircraft is flying through control whether a contrail forms and how long it lasts. This graph shows that the warmer it is, the harder it is for a contrail to form. But the more water vapor or humidity there is in the air, the easier it is for a contrail to form. It matters because contrails act like greenhouse gases. In fact, contrails may cause more warming than the carbon dioxide released from burning the fuel that the aircraft uses to power its flight. We're now producing very detailed 3D maps of the atmosphere which will help us guide aeroplanes to fly at altitudes where contrails won't form. Changing the height the plane is flying at by just a few hundred meters might make the difference between a contrail which lasts for hours or not leaving a contrail at all. This should help us to reduce contrail formation and reduce climate change. Changing the altitude of fewer than 2% of flights could potentially reduce contrail-linked climate change by a staggering 60%. By understanding the evaporation, condensation, sublimation and deposition that is going on in the atmosphere, we can really make a difference to climate change.